What impact will Mike Bobo have on the recruiting trail? That's the question that I have for you today. Obviously, Todd Munkin leaving Georgia took the offensive coordinator position with the Baltimore Ravens. Big, big deal. Obviously, the best uh, offensive coordinator in Georgia Bulldog history. Mike Bobo now replacing him, who is the second best offensive coordinator in Bulldog history. Mike Bobo knows what he's doing, and he knows what he's doing on the recruiting trail. So as big as it is losing Todd Munkin, who was the best play caller in college football the last two years at least, you know, all they really have to do on the trail, or at least all Todd Munkin really had to do, was go recruit the quarterback and build a relationship with the quarterback and his family, no matter who it is. Obviously, you know, he meets with the wide receivers and their family, the offensive linemen, running backs, tight ends when they're on campus. But for the most part, his job was to go out and get the quarterback of the future. And we know Mike Bobo has that type of resume. He can go out there and do the same thing. He knows the state of Georgia as well as any assistant coach in the country. Obviously coached at the University of Georgia for a long time, a lot of experience calling plays and recruiting. So before I get into what this, you know, means his past you know what you know the quarterbacks that he brought in while he's at Georgia before I want to you know just talk about what it means right now for the current you know 2024 commitment right now Ryan Puglisi four-star quarterback out of uh, Connecticut you know Todd Munkin was a big reason why he committed to Georgia Todd Munkin um, you know found him you know this time last year um, kept recruiting him got him on campus uh, extended an offer to him and laid, landed his commitment last year so big deal leaving but uh, you know, his dad told me that Tom Munkin is a class act, spoke with him a little bit before he took uh, the job in Baltimore. And they knew that this, you know, could happen, that this is coming, right? You know, he's a guy with NFL experience. Obviously, it's not a surprise that he would want to go back and do that. So I think they had a feeling, excuse me, that this was coming and they kind of knew who was going to be replacing him and Mike Bobo. I know Mike Bobo has a relationship with Ryan and his family already. Um, they're going to be in town March 18th. I think, let me try to look that back up. I, um, you know, spoke with, uh, Ryan's father, Dan Puglisi, um, recently. Yes, March 18th, the Puglisis will be back in Athens, uh, for an unofficial visit. And I think they're going to, you know, square things away there. So right now he is committed as far as, you know, things go with Dylan Raiola, number one, uh, overall player in the entire country for the 2024 class, a guy that people are comparing to Pat Mahomes, elite arm talent, plenty of size out there in, uh, Arizona, decommitted from Ohio State. And I've reported before, I thought Georgia was the leader for him early in his recruitment. Georgia offered first. Um, now that he's open, uh, I do think this is turning into a Georgia, USC, Nebraska battle. Obviously, his father played for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And then for the Detroit Lions with Matthew Stafford, Dylan Raiola told me, you know, over a year ago when Georgia offered that, he calls Matthew Stafford Uncle Matthew. He's known him basically his whole life. Those two are good friends. Quick story, I was at SoFi Stadium covering the national championship game and I ran into Dylan Raiola and his father, Dominic Raiola. Uh, before the game, I was trying to set up cameras in the different end zone and ran into both of them and they were waiting for Matthew Stafford to kind of hang out with before they went to their suite to watch the national championship game. So they are still close. Obviously, Mike Bobo uh, coached you know, and recruited Matthew Stafford. And I know Matthew has told uh, the Raiola family all about Mike Bobo. So there's been a connection there for a long time. So if anything, I do think this helps Georgia in their pursuit of the five-star quarterback number one player in the country who I, I think has all the talent in the world, has, you know, a Heisman type of career ahead of him if he continues to grow and develop. And uh, I, I do think he has easy NFL first-round potential written all over him. So as far as, you know, where Georgia stands with him, I think that, you know, promoting Mike Bobo is something that the Riolas kind of saw coming uh, with all of his experience, not only at Georgia, but at Colorado State, Auburn, so, uh, South Carolina. He's been around for a while. And again, he's, you know, coached up guys like Matthew Stafford and Aaron Murray, two of the best quarterbacks in Georgia history, really. And uh, he was in the early part of the recruitment of uh, Jacob Eason, I believe, uh, early in, you know, 2015 when Jacob was, a think, like a sophomore. I think Mike Bobo, um, was important there early in his recruitment, uh, under Mark Rick. So yeah, he knows what he's doing as far as quarterback goes and he can lead an offense. Mike Bobo puts up points. Uh, we saw in 2012, Georgia was obviously the second best team in the country, had the most explosive offense in the country that year, just scoring points at will. Uh, 2014 with a guy like Hudson Mason throwing the football, they still, had a very good offense. And, you know, with Mike, you know, he's such a, a good, you know, people person. He connects and he knows so many people that, you know, it was, um, 
you know, he helped get a lot of other guys, you know, Todd Gurley, uh, Sony Michelle, um, a few others. So it's not like he just goes out and recruits the quarterback. That's going to be his biggest job. His most important job at Georgia is to go, you know, keep Ryan Biglisi on board, go and, uh, you know, continue to work on that relationship with Dylan Raiola. But he knows what he's doing from a play call perspective. And, you know, parents know that they understand that they, you know, remember his time at Georgia when they were, you know, consistently one of the better teams in college football. Um, 2011 was a good year, uh, offensively, um, Aaron Murray's sophomore year. And then 2012, you know, they, he had that offense clicking and he's going to be stepping into a better situation now with an experienced quarterback room and, uh, you know, top offensive line, something he didn't really have when he was at Georgia under Mark Rick. That's probably the position group that has improved the most on since Kirby has arrived. You know, they go out and they get maulers. They get guys who they think can play at the NFL level on the offensive line. So he's got a better offensive line that he's working with. Carson Beck is coming into his fourth year. I don't expect a lot of, um, you know, translation scheme to be changing from Todd Munkin to Mike Bobo. And, you know, Mike's been the assistant tight ends coach while he's been there. He's been out there recruiting. He knows these players. He's been around the program for a couple of years now. He knows their strengths and weaknesses. He knows, uh, you know, it's not like he's just stepping in the door and starting kind of from scratch, brand new at Georgia. He's been around a little bit now. He knows what Carson's capable of. And listen, Gunnar Stockton, you know, Mike Bobo's father was one of the first people to coach and train Gunnar Stockton at an early age. He knows all about Gunnar and has for a long, long time. And Gunner chose South Carolina originally, remember, because of Mike Bobo and Will Muschamp was there too. He wanted to play for both of those guys. And now they're both at Georgia. Gunner's at Georgia. So if you're Gunner Stockton, this is um, everything you could have asked for or dreamed about. You know, you get to play with Mike Bobo, who you wanted to, even at South Carolina. He was going to suck it up because he wanted to play for Mike. And Mike knows what Gunner brings to the table. He still has to get past uh, a very talented Brock Vandegrift. And I don't think he's going to win this tardy job over Carson Beck, who's going to be entering his fourth year. But if you're Mike Bobo, you have to like the talent and the situation you are in right now. Um, he's got plenty of talented receivers, obviously the best tight end in college football, possibly the best overall player in college football. So Mike Bobo, um, you know, he's going to take a little bit of what he learned from Todd Munkin. And, you know, you're always looking to see what works around the country. So he's going to take, you know, his style. He knows what works. And he's going to, you know, change it just a little bit. And, um, go from there, but it's an exciting position to be in to call plays when you have this much talent around you and a quarterback who is ready for a breakout season with a very talented arm. So, you know, if you're a quarterback and you're playing for Mike Bobo, you know, more often than not, good things happen. Um, and I know Matthew Stafford uh, progressed a lot during his time at Georgia because of Mike Bobo. Aaron Murray got better and better and better as his career went along because of Mike Bobo. And uh, it, he had Joe Cox, who wasn't that great, but, you know, made some throws here and there for a guy who didn't have an elite arm. Uh, same with Hudson Mason. Um, but he's known to go out and, and get quarterbacks. And I think that he's going to be in an even better position to land basically any guy he wants moving forward. These quarterbacks want to play at Georgia right now. And it was an interesting move for any quarterback to come there and play for Todd Munkin. But there's not... I don't think going to be so much of a drop off, especially on the recruiting trail from Todd to Mike. So, uh, again, Kirby's got his guys, his two buddies, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. It's a family over there. Uh, so many Georgia people. Brian McClendon played at Georgia. He's the wide receiver coach. Todd Hartley uh, has been around the program ever since, you know, the Mark Rick days. A lot of guys who uh, are, are Georgia guys, Georgia dudes. And now the three most important coaches on the staff all played at Georgia and um, Mike Bobo was one of the best play callers in the game a few years ago. Didn't have a ton of success at Auburn and South Carolina, but tough situations right now. He's in a great situation. So as far as recruiting goes, I don't think it's you're really going to see a drop off at all. As long as Kirby Smart's there, quarterbacks are going to want to play for Georgia because they know that they're going to have plenty of solid offensive linemen in front of them, weapons all over the place, and a great defense to always keep them in the game and in contention for a national championship. So moving forward, whoever the coordinator is, as long as hey, you know Kirby is running the show, quarterbacks are going to look at Georgia um, you know, in a bigger way every year. And uh, I, I think Mike is going to do a great job. Uh, he, again, he knows what he's doing. And this is not some young guy trying to prove himself. This is kind of you know, a, an older 
you know, coach, I don't want to call him old, but an experienced coach who wants to show that, hey, I still have this. I'm still one of the best play, play callers in college football, and I can go and recruit and get the quarterbacks I want from my system. So I do think good things are ahead. And um, I know a lot of people, you know, still are, are have their doubts about Mike Bobo, but um, I think the quarterback play is going to continue to be very, very good in Athens as long as Mike Bobo is around. I think it's a great uh, you know, promotion, if you want to call it that. And I think he's going to do just fine on the recruiting trail. Guys, thanks for watching this video. As always, stay tuned to the next one coming up right now. I'll see you over on Dog Post.